Hello everyone and welcome to another week of the next issue of the Power Trip. I know this is going to be way different because for once you can actually see me talking directly to you, which is a completely different style and format. I'm trying some new changes, some new t styles, techniques, new camera, all those fun things, and uh, new hair that wants to be kind of weird on me right now, one side way higher than the other. Not a lot I can do about that. But trying a few new things, that's why I have the dark background back here, not really showing much right now. I've got some stuff I'm going to be working on as a new backdrop and uh, some new formats with videos and such going forward. Um, with that said, uh, obviously I'm open to suggestions as well from you guys. Just uh, reach out, contact on uh, through Patreon to uh, request any videos or anything, or reach out through comments and such for ideas on what you would like to see me do. Obviously, I'm going to be a little, having a little bit more comic book related stuff around me. I've got plenty of design ideas I want to do, as well as going more out and about. Uh, planning some stuff with some comic conventions, and maybe a few things with the local comic stores I've got nearby. So, just some fun, exciting things I'd like to try out, see how it goes. And we'll go from there. Always trying to venture out and grow the culture cache. With that said, I don't want to make this all about a video just explaining away some new fun things and showing off my not-so-new fun face, but um, instead I wanted to also take a moment to go back and just base on some fun theories here, because one of the fun thing about comics is theories. Being able to try and predict where a story's going to end. It works that way with any book, really. You read, you know, Game of Thrones or uh, Walking Dead comics or, you know, anywhere from novels to comics to any kind of book. And the fun thing is always trying to predict well, where's the writer going to go with this next. Sometimes it's pretty predictable, sometimes not so much. And so, one of my favorite things to do, I say favorite, sometimes it can be really annoying, is see where they're going with movies and comics. Now, I'm going to kind of branch off into movies here a little bit, which is not normally what I would do, except that this does play a huge thing in some upcoming comic book storylines. Now, we've got a lot of big things revealed actually today on a lot of news sites online of an upcoming story segment going on in uh, the uh, Unworthy Thor comic namely issue number five. I was uh, planning this part of the video uh, all along and then I read this today and I was like, you know, this is, I, I have to, I have to redo my video. I have to add this part in because this is just going to be absolutely amazing because it fits my whole theory here because with the new solicitations and stuff with Unworthy Thor number five, after two years since Original Sin, we're finally going to find out what Nick Fury said to Thor that made him unworthy and not be able to lift the hammer anymore, which led to a new Thor, which led to... went through secret wars, and now we've got the original Thor about to try and grasp his hands on Ultimate Thor's hammer after secret wars in which we're also going to find out what made him unworthy in the first place. Why did I mention movies, per se? Well, here's the thing. When they first announced Thor Ragnarok, one of the things that they mentioned was the idea that Nick Fury was going to cameo in this one, which was odd, seeing as how he wasn't in Civil War, and there were the, he's not been solicited for Black Panther and a few others that you would think well, these are the down-to-earth stories he should be making some kind of a cameo in, which, not, not to say he won't make a, a, a surprise cameo after credit scene, but so far he's not. But the rumor, and this has been a consistent rumor, is that he's going to be in Thor Ragnarok. At first, everyone kind of is trying to figure out why he would be there, of all places. But as time went on, and things were going with the Thor story along with Original Sin and such, it started to make a little bit more sense, a little bit more sense. And then it hit me this past week that what we're going to see isn't 
Nick Fury. My theory here, because if you've been reading anything about some of the stuff with the upcoming Thor movie, that's supposed to be kind of a mix between the Ragnarok storyline and uh, World War Hulk, or actually Planet Hulk, which would have led to World War Hulk. We may still end up with a variation of that, but I know we're getting a, a variation of Planet Hulk with the Ragnarok story. The key component here is, it's already been said that Thor's going to have to go a pretty good chunk of this adventure without his hammer. Going without the hammer, rumors of Nick Fury being in the movie, and now, all of a sudden, within the same time span, the same year, as when the movie's going to come out, now, after two years, we're finally going to find out what Fury said. This goes into my theories that they don't want the movie to spoil what's already been said in the comics. The comic is going to spoil it first, and then we're going to get a very similar scene in the movie. Because the movies are going to do their own version of these things. You can't fit you know, years and years and years worth of comic book storyline into one simple movie and have it be play by play, word for word, exactly what it's going what it was in the books. So when it when it hits the movies, they do their own variation of it. That's why I also don't think it's going to be actual Nick Fury. Reaching out kind of in a the, the second Thor movie when Loki took on the guys of Captain America to kind of taunt Thor. I think that's what we're going to kind of see here. Thor shows back up, trying to figure out what's going on. All of his brethren are missing, and he he's trying to figure out what's going on. Loki gets close to Thor by disguising himself as Fury, and at that point, states something, whispers something, that in this version, in the other version, it was Nick Fury, but he had, he'd been... The, the, the keeper of the wall or something, the guardian on the wall to protect the Marvel Universe from threats that they didn't even know existed yet. In this case, though, Loki being someone that would be the only person that would know these secrets in this universe, he's going to get close as Nick Fury and whisper this comment to him and make him drop the hammer and make him unworthy. So we're going to get this scene. I'm almost positive. This is this is this is theory. Once again, I don't know something. Nothing has been told to me. This is going between the comics and seeing how they work it to the movie, seeing is how they're trying to integrate certain certain storylines, and then, like I've mentioned in a previous video and article, which you can go back on the Culture Cache and take a look at. They love the years that you see these movies hit. They love to keep the comic book storyline close to what that movie is. And they've gone this long without us ever knowing why Thor was unworthy. They just dropped it completely. They knew they were going to come back to it, but they waited because they knew this is when this movie's going to hit. This is how they want the movie to go. And here, now we're going to get to find that out in the book and then see it play out in the movie. This is kind of, this is, this was the big theory, the big take. This is kind of the big thing that's been circling my brain here for the last couple weeks. Because out of all the upcoming movies before Avengers, Thor Ragnarok's actually been the most anticipated one for me. I can't wait to watch it. I've enjoyed seeing stuff about Doctor Strange, and I'm really pumped about Gar uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, but... Thor Ragnarok, I think, is going to be one of my favorite movies, just seeing it play out, and especially with the Hulk there, and seeing him in his Planet Hulk, almost World War Hulk armor, it's going to be great. I, I cannot wait. But that's going to be all for me for this week. Look forward to next week's article, where I touch base, really go into a lot more detail between Original Sin and the build-up to Unworthy Hulk, and kind of show you in depth in the article those ties I'm talking about about what's going to happen with the movie. My my theory here, once again, not really a spoiler there, just my theories to this. And, by the way, I have no idea what could have been said that would make him drop the hammer. But, it, it's been a long time coming and I can't wait to read that. So, until then, and until next week, I'll see you all 
from the next issue.